How are we YouTube? George here. Here's one. A DAC 6 SSB. And uh, this came to me from a good friend of mine. Odge Nodge. Does the vintage radio and television. He came down to see me here a couple of weeks back. And he had this for me. Now there's only one other video. On the whole of YouTube I found. With one of these in it. And that was from Mike's Radio Repair. Does anybody know what happened to that guy? He seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. Uh, I'd just be interested to know if he's okay. If anybody knows, uh, drop it in the comments below. So, um, it's been stored somewhere damp. It's covered in surface rust. But it has its own bracket. And it has a microphone with it, but there's, this is the microphone that came with it, but the audio wire seems to be pulled out, so, um, we'll turn it on, and see what happens, this is the mic again, the pot's a bit loose for some reason, anyway, so, they're on the generator. We have receive. Signal meter is stuck. And as you see it now is how we came here. Covered in a layer of muck and dirt and Mm, squelch works. The meter is just stuck, I'd say. Now, as far as I know, these are a copy of. Where's my receive gun? Oh, the pots are manky. Um, these are a copy of a uh, Cybernet chassis. But this DAC-6 is pretty much the same PCB as the DAC-10. The big huge one with the four big massive meters on it. With the exception that it doesn't have the valve or tube uh, PA section. Uh, that's what Mike said anyway in his video. Um, so the receive LED is out, and um, all the switches seem to work, they're just dirty. That's just dirt now that's in there. Well, at least we have received. That's something. Um, what we'll do now is we'll put it on the dummy load and see have we anything there. Okay, so we have it hooked up to the dummy load here. And we're getting our transmit LED, but we ain't getting no output. Not a thing. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Check one, two. No, and uh, just to be sure, we'll try a different microphone. One, 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 one. Not a thing. Try sideband. No. So, I think we'll crack it open and have a quick look around inside. This is not going to be a repair video, it's just kind of like a an assessment video. Because I've never seen one of these before. Okay, so we have it open there. Uh, these things have a double sided board in them. And the way they're done is there's a pin that comes from one side of the board to the other and it's soldered up. This that's what Mike said in his video. I see one thing straight away there. It's this track here 
is lifted and it's cracked. Don't know if you can see that. There's a big dirty crack in it. So I'll have to look at that. And he said that these suffer with uh, bad joints where these pins come through the board. Now, if you look on the component side, very Ham International esque in here, the way it's done. PA tank looks identical to what you'd find in a multi mode or a jumbo or Concord, any of them. And uh, you can see where the pins come up through the board, right down in there. So it'll all have to be gone through to see can we find where the bad joint is. Hmm. But it hasn't been messed with uh, in terms of any modifications or anything like that. It's bog standard from what I can see. It has the old type metal VCO as opposed to the later orange and green plastic ones oh you can see here now look it's had a couple of burnt tracks here so someone jumpered them out got wire uh, that one is that one's off nearly it's not a good connection at all so we'll have to check all that all this mess down here is probably factory I'd say where are them wires going? Yeah, they just go into the bottom of the encoder. That's why I never really liked uh, Cybernet stuff. It's it's too messy. DT two one nine. Let's see what board is there. A... I'm just looking to see does it give us a board number like the Ham International stuff. You see the way all the sections are screened, like you have your VCO section here, mixer, audio, PA. Hmm. Well made in that respect. So it'll be an interesting project to, um, uh, only for the reason of what it is that I've never seen one before, and I'm told it's rare. Um... That was in a shed. It's covered in overspray. You can get all that off and get it cleaned up. And the face, while it looks absolutely horrendous, is in very good condition. There's not a mark on it. It's just dirty. You know, so we can take that off and clean it and clean all the knobs and get the RX LED working, get the meter working. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, interesting. Like you can see, uh, like all the rust that's on the case. There's there's none on the inside, so it's only surface rust, which is good. So it's just going to be a matter of going through it whenever I get time, and uh, see can we get this bad boy to work. It does receive, so that's half the battle. Everything cleaned up and all the switches cleaned and the pots and all that stuff. So I'll just put it back on the aerial uh, and see can we hear anything on 38 lower. I've just uh, <clears throat> grounded out the receive there. Just to make sure we've good connections. I'm not sure what way the, this thing is wired up microphone wise. I have to look look into that. So um I did hear something on 38 lore just before I started recording this video, but it was very faint. Nice looking radio. Interesting.
This is the way I like stuff to come here for a project. Nice quiet receiver on AM. It's way out on on sideband. It sounds very narrow. So there's someone in there twiddling. So as I said there's that. Dodgy looking joint there. And there's that. Plus whatever else we find. So you can see as where the pins come through. Right there. So we just end up probably going through them all. And uh, reflowing them. And see does that make any difference? You know, lick of paint in the cases, clean up the chrome. The chrome looks good under all that crap. <laughs> That'll clean up. It should come up very nice. So anyway, we'll leave it there for this video. And uh, we'll no doubt be back at some stage with a follow-up on this DAC-6 single sideband transceiver. Now I would imagine that this being based on a cybernet or a cyber scutter as I call them. We should be able to uh, add channels to this handy enough. The one Mike had on his channel he had a little pigtail with a box and three switches on it so he was just uh, driving the PLL with the with them but uh, there might be an easier way of doing it happy days so anyway we'll leave it there for now we'll get you in the next one